Alright, so it's time for another uh, another little video here. Gonna get us a video together. Got my uh, new live well system loaded up and going to uh, go out and test it out. Make sure everything is good with it before we publish the article on Angler. But I uh, want to let y'all know something first. I got, uh, got some shirts for sale. Yeah, and that's where you can find them. And the link will be below in the video. <laughs> link below. It's not... That old rap reference is your chain hang low. That's just link below. See what I'm saying? So I'm going to show y'all what we got uh, to offer here at Shea's Shirts. Enjoy. Let's see if we can flip that later in post. All right. So, yeah. Link below. I feel like Joey Tribbiani and friends when he put on all of Matthew Perry's clothes. Share the water. You need to know that. You know, sometimes you got to share the water. What we got next? Paddle faster. I hear banjos. That's a little... Yeah, you know, deliverance reference there. We got shut up and paddle. Y'all know what time it is. Time to shut up and paddle. Idle speed only. That's me. You see me paddling, bro? That's about as fast as I'm going to get. Idle speed only. Kayaks are bass boats, too. Don't argue with me. Don't say, hey, when I fish out of a bass boat, kayaks are bass boats, too. You know, when they're running around close to me, hey, no wake zone. You see me? I'm a no wake zone. Last but not least, one of my faves, the original two-stroke. There you go. So, hey. We're going to go fish a little while, see if this live wheel system's working. Check out the shirts at Shay's Shirts. Link below. All right, let's check, make sure there ain't no snake under here. Eventually, there's going to be one. That moved the boat in a few days. No snakes, that's good. All right, so here's my little live well. And the idea is that I can put this through the scupper hole here and let it run down and be my intake and I'm probably just going to let this trail behind the boat the only thing I'm worried about here is if I run this up here and go through the other scupper hole I'm afraid that uh, the gravity to push this water out won't be as strong as the pump pushing the water in and it'll just overflow out the edges which is not that big a deal again because you can go through the scupper hole but I don't really want my power station sitting in a bunch of water so I may try to start with coming back up through the scupper hole, see how that goes. We'll see. So here's the setup. Here's what I got. I made a, I just wrote a DIY article on this too. But basically I got these hose kits. And I mean, you can get anywhere. I'll link them below where you can tell what it is. But they come with these little fittings. This is my overflow in the back here. So I've got this net netting in here to where when I catch one, it won't jump out. When I, when I put one in here, the other ones won't try to jump out. That was one problem I ran into the first time in my first one. So, and all this is is Velcroed in, you know. And uh, this is just little, this netting is just uh, what a couple of flippers came in, uh, like for swimming around in a pool. And then, like I said, I got my overflow here, little fitting deal there. So here's my aerator pumping in. I got it where it'll pump much water as possible. I mean, kind of make as many bubbles as possible. So on this side, you see the aerator. I had to get one that would pull less than five amps. I'm going to secure it a little bit better. I just got it kind of caulked around it right now. But I got another one of these hose kits that comes in, and I can take this now and run it down through this scupper hole and let the water go out. I mean, come in. That's where it's going to pull water in. But yeah, I just got my aerator hooked up. There's my... Need to tape those up where water doesn't get on them. But there's my aerator, and it's uh, this is a little connector that comes with a power station from Yellow Tech. And this can be turned on and off with these switches. Each one of these ports are independent. So whenever I catch a fish, I can just reach back and hit that, and now my aerator's running. But until then, I don't have to have water in, that, in the live well, which is one of the things that really messed me up before. Let's dump it in and see what we got. All right, so the boat's in the water. Let's see. Go ahead and run my overflow out. One of my scupper holes, and then there's my intake. I'm going to let it get down there a little deeper in a minute when we get out a little deeper water. But let's try it out and see what we got.
pulled up back at the farm, got off work, went home and tweaked my aerator a little bit on my live well. I, I think, I hope, I think, I hope that I've finally figured out what's going on. I think that the aerator needs to be uh, below water level. Once you get in the boat, now that I got the aerator down through one of the scupper holes, it should be where it's actually below water level, not like it's in the water. But anyway, gonna try it out, see. I'll check it out. Another shirt, got a couple more shirts in that I made. Last cast, you always know it's a lie, but you gotta say it anyway. So, last cast, check it out. I'll put the link below. Let's get it. So, I believe the problem was that the little uh, aerator pump wouldn't prime, and I couldn't figure out why it wouldn't prime. And I think that's what it is. It has to be, it just doesn't have enough pull to pull that uh, water up. So, now I got it where it's really close to the water and actually will be below water level. But we still have the moment of truth coming, so hopefully, 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 hopefully. This was pretty cool. I'm going to try to show you before I put the boat in the water. But these scupper holes here and the bona fide is perfect size. And all it is, I took a little piece of screen, a little piece of that net, and put it over there. But the scupper holes are the perfect size. Just drop your pump down in there. And I got it wired to my power station here put this up here where it doesn't get any water on it but uh, it's perfect size to slide down to that hole so what's I was gonna show you underneath there but that uh, pump that I bought is the exact right length to where it sticks down through the hole but it doesn't go down into the dirt it's like perfect length this is gonna be my overflow I think I'm just gonna let it run out the back of the boat right now yeah, so again, I got the netting in here. Since I took my pump off the side here, I just put a little, uh, you know, import hole. And get those real cheap, a piece of PVC. Cut my little piece of hose, let's see what happens. I may have to get in for it to get low enough in the water. I think I'll have to get in the boat. See what I was saying there is that that has to be, so there's the mud line on this boat where the water level gets to. See that needs to be below the water line. So I'm gonna have to get in the boat, but once I get in the boat, I think it'll prime, I hope. Try to get this thing ready to where I can go. Give it another go on the Wednesday night or tomorrow night. I gotta get my air ready going. I can do like I did before with the bubble makers and I'll probably still take the bubble makers anyway because uh, it just aerates the water even better. And that way if my, you know, your other you know, power station there, if it dies, then the little bubble makers will keep kicking. So. All right, snap it in. All right, let's give it a shot. See, if you look here, see how the water comes up right to the edge of that scupper hole? I think the same will be the case for this back hole. Let's see where the button at. Come on, baby, pump it in there. Yes, I heard it prime. I got water coming in. I got water coming in, baby. All right, sweet. Doesn't seem like that would be that complicated. I've had a pretty good little go. Trying to get that thing going. The other way to attach that a little better, but that's good. I got water pumping in. All right, let's test out the new live well. See, what's good about that, like I went up to Martin, and I'll link the video below if y'all haven't watched it, but now I won one of these little pot tournaments out of this thing, fishing against some bass boats on a Wednesday night or on a lake called Middle Pond or Yates Lake, but uh. I won that one, so I said, you know, that night I just filled my cooler up and got lucky and caught fish pretty quick, so it didn't matter, but man, I went to Martin, I paddled around, I had to fill my cooler up beforehand before I got started. I never even got, I never, I got one bump. I never caught a fish. So man, by the end of the night, I've been paddling around with 48 quarts of water, like 96 pounds or something of water and ain't had a bite. So it's a complete waste of time and energy. 
you know, having all that water in there. So now I can wait till I get my first bite and I can turn that joker on and let it fill up. That's awesome. Pretty excited about that deal. Only thing I worry about is if my overflow can keep up with the pump. You know, I think if I keep my lid shut, it'll kind of push it out there. But if I open the lid, I'm afraid the water's going to come out into the floor. Which doesn't matter because there's scupper holes back here, but I also don't want it to get all over my power station either. Mess it up. Let's see what it's doing back here. Yep, filling up my floor. <clears throat> my overflow is not able to keep up with my pump, which I was afraid of, but uh, I don't know. I may have to. Maybe best to uh, cut a bigger overflow or two overflows. Put the overflow a little lower. I still don't think it's gonna be able to keep up. Oh, it ain't nothing easy. Nothing ever easy. I thought I finally had it when my pump started priming. And I mean, I could just pump in like that until it gets full and then uh, have my little bubble makers. And I could do that, but I was wanting to have it where I could pump fresh water in constantly. <laughs> uh, try my cold balls with the live well. Got it. Hadn't even put a fish in here yet with the net. Let's see how that works. All right, I don't have my aerator running because it's overflowing. I'm gonna go ahead and let this fish go. But I got them on a cold ball to where hopefully now I can open the live well. I don't have to worry about one jumping out because it's mesh. And I got them on a cold ball so I can reach in there and grab the cold ball and slip them out. So that's good. I'm gonna secure that a little better there. But that's working good. Can't complain there. All right, back on the grind. Head back to Middle Pond for Wednesday nighter. Gonna try them boys again. Put a little gas in the boat. That ought to do it. So yeah, idle speed only. That's me. That's how fast I'm going. Shea shirts, check them out. I gotta make money somehow, y'all. Buy a shirt. Wear a shirt. It's. I mean, there's some decent looking shirts. I guess that's some smart aleck stuff. Some pretty catchy stuff. But anyway, yeah, we're gonna go try them out again on Wednesday nighter. See y'all out there. What's up, Cuzzo? What's up? Uh, Y'all ready? You got your rope? No, just dope on a rope would have been, but I ain't bring no rope. This is probably for the best. I don't do that. I'm going to roll over sideways. Gino! Talk to the hand. You ain't going to talk to me, Gino. Gino, you ain't going to talk to me, Gino. No. No, man, quit now. Quit playing. All right, so I put me a little piece of foam, a little foam block in here to get this up where if, when the water comes up into the bottom, if it does like it did the other day, it won't get wet. Now I gotta get this right here, connector to stay above the water too. But everything should be good with that right there. Once I get in the boat, should pump water right in. Hey, uh, I called Dick Type a little while ago, my army buddy. Yeah. Watching it now in utter misery. Saw you hook one too. Great video. <laughs> he, I told him to go on YouTube and look at the video. Yeah, that's good. Cool. So you can run with me and say something. That's good. You ready? Hey, you don't need that paddle. No. Nah. <sighs> you don't need that paddle. Jamie said he'd pull me anytime I wanted to. I said that'll probably never happen. I won't pull you. 
Now, uh, the best way to do it would just be to tie to the front where it goes straight. But I wouldn't trust nobody to do that. <laughs> if I hold it, I'm afraid it's going to turn and try to roll me over. All right, boys, I think we're ready. Bye, well, ready to pump water in. Make sure everything's good on it. Make sure I don't shut this too hard where my little hoses don't cramp. I think we're good. Bob. That's a Cadillac, Cadillac. <laughs> I got him out of the water. I don't want any more resistance than the necessary. Alright. I think I'm ready. What's funny is first time I was just goofing off, you know, having fun. I had no expectation I used to do anything now that I've won one. I'm kinda like trying to win again. <laughs> Uh, you can go halfway, and then you gotta turn around and come back. Huh? I'm just up tournament directors right there. I'm trying to get caught up with him. <laughs> All right, 552. We got the angle out, ready to roll. See how far I travel tonight. Bullseye on my hat. Just drop it in there, and I push the bullseye when I catch one if I remember. I need to remember. Sometimes I forget. Hey, Gino. Sit on the back deck and hold my paddle for a while. See who, let, who lets go first. <laughs> I think I'm going to go a pretty good ways and swim a jig a little bit. Not like I did. Try to, try to do exactly what I did the other night. Hopefully catch some mini. Maybe catch a big one. Try a frog a little bit probably. Have as much time as I had last week. Oh, I done caught up with the waves though. Woo! They took off in front of me, but I caught up with the waves. Glad I don't have all that water in my live well right now. Is that kind of making the top heavy, probably? Right. A lot better to be paddling without all that weight in here. Let the waves settle down, make a couple casts. Definitely won't have as much time before dark tonight. It's gonna get dark a little earlier. Let me get dark around 7:30. About a month ago, when I fished that one on one, it was getting dark at uh, about 8 o'clock. So, I don't have quite as much time to swim a jig and stuff. Funny thing is, I hadn't seen a snake out of a kayak yet, and uh, I'm just about to get where I don't really think about it anymore. And that's when that sun was gonna swim up right beside me. When I finally feel a little comfortable, don't surprise me. Missed it. Put your up the bike. Got a bit of a brim or something. Nope, got him. Good deal, get in the boat. Good deal, baby. Sweet. All right. Number one. All right, get a little keeper. I swallow that thing. You got it that time. Boy. Good deal. Try it my live well. Get a cool ball. All right. Let's see what we can do here. All right. So, in theory, I take it, Joker, just like it right there. Nothing to it. Turn my pump on. Sweet. I got the little bubble makers there. Go ahead and turn both of them on. As soon as it gets full, I gotta turn it back off. 
it overflows into the floor, which is not a big deal, but my scupper holes uh, can't keep up because the water's it's got too much weight in here for the scupper holes to keep up. So, good deal, got a fish. Got a fish. He catch about a five pounder. I hadn't really caught many big ones, any big ones. I've caught some three and four pounders over at the farm pond, but I hadn't, really, hadn't caught one over, I guess over three pounds out of the kayak in a real fishery, real lake or whatever, public water. You get a big one tonight. I tie in like a five or six pounder in this thing. It's gonna be a blast. Probably about to get full. That take out the pump right there long. It's like 450 gallons per hour or something like that. Let's see. Yep, full. All right. Bubble makers are still kicking. Sweet. Sweet, sweet. All right. All right. Good, good, good. My well's working good. That's exciting. You can definitely tell the difference in the weight having that, that live well full of water versus nothing in it. So it didn't last long. I could have filled it up tonight. I didn't paddle far before I got a bite. But you go four hours on Martin without a bite, have that thing slap full like I did one night. It was a pain in my back, butt, arms, legs. I was tired of paddling that night. So I paddled way too much too. Tried to cover a lot of water. Another bite. Come back, get it. Yeah, missed it. Like a little one. Probably took my trailer. Nope. Like a little guy. Maybe 12 inches. Got a perfect little breeze for the swim jig. But it's kind of in my face, so make it a little bit tougher paddling. But I'll take it, because it'll probably make them bite a little better. Breeze feels fantastic. It's just tough on a paddler from the front. There's one. Get the boat, get the boat, get the boat. Got it. He's under my butt. He's in my junk drawer. Oh man, what are the odds? That junker went under, under my butt and into the junk drawer. I don't know if he'll measure. Be close. Ah, <laughs> that was a crazy kid. Dang. 11 three quarter. Ah, if he'd have come off, I'd, probably, I'd have bet you he was a quarter inch longer. All right. Let's get done. another bite right quick. That was crazy. So, fun fact about me here lately, I've been wanting to lose some weight, and I'm, I lose weight pretty easily. Whenever I finally make up my mind, I mean, I lose it quick, drop a bunch of weight. I got up to 289 once upon a time, and then uh, last year, I lost a little bit of that and over time, and then last year, I got pretty serious about it. In a few months, I lost 52 pounds, but now I've gained back about 20 of that. So, uh, anyway, I've been looking up on this fasting deal my buddy tom frank uh won a national championship in college a few years ago good good dude hammer he uh was telling me he was trying intermittent fasting and i said what's that and he's like well you basically just have these windows where you do and don't eat and uh it's really not complicated and it's not as hippie and crazy as it sounds because it's basically just what we used to do you know you didn't go out in the field and, uh, you know, three hours into the day, somebody put a muffin in your mouth, you know, there's no need for that. So, uh, your body just stores all that fat for later and then it never has to use it. So anyway, I'm just curious if any of y'all have looked into that stuff much. I've started doing it. I did a, uh, 16 hour fast, a 20 hour fast and a 24 hour fast where I didn't eat anything for 24 hours. You can drink water and coffee and there's different schools of thought on, on what you can and can't drink, but I've been, I have been work outside a lot, so I can't just, I have to drink at least something with electrolytes and stuff like that, some salt, and sodium and all. So I've been drinking like Powerade Zeros and Propels and Gatorade Zeros, and then uh, a lot of water. Anytime I get hungry, I just drink a bottle of water, and it hasn't been 
I really haven't been hungry. Not like painful, you know. I've never had, I hadn't had a hunger pain in any of those times and only been doing it about a week. But curious to know if any of y'all are doing that. Any of the guys out here, guys and gals watching this stuff. I'm trying to look into it as much as I can, do research and all. So let me know in a comment below if y'all have ever tried intermittent fasting. It's supposed to be a good, I got a lot of diabetes in my family. It's supposed to be a good way to prevent that, you know, type 2 diabetes. So I'm going to try to get some weight off and see what happens. If you don't eat, you will lose weight. I guarantee you that. Gotcha. Bye-bye, fly. Sorry, I don't usually kill animals on my shows, but sometimes you got to take matters into your own hands. Shoe fly, I don't bother me. It wasn't working. So I've never hunted. And I know that's way crazy looking at me and listening to me and all, but I mean, I... My uncle loved to hunt. My dad loved to fish, and you know I started fishing with my dad. And I never, never got into hunting, and uh, but I'm going to now. The farm where I work, I mean, we do a lot of hunting over there. Take people anyway, and I, I just never have. I've never shot a deer. I've never shot a turkey. Never shot a duck. I've shot a few dove before, but uh, pretty much never hunted. You know, so I'm thinking about filming some of that. Let me know if y'all would like to see that. Uh, in the comments below if y'all like to see some hunting stuff and it'd be a new adventure kind of like this kayak deal where i really don't know what i'm getting into i mean i've seen a, a bunch of it you know but i've never done it never had that feeling so it'd be pretty cool to try and uh get some good healthy meat too so let me know if y'all want to see me do some hunting on this channel might start mixing that in about that time of year Flies are tearing me up today. Thirty minutes in, had a bite. Had a fish in the live well in like five minutes. Caught it as an eye keeper. Go ahead and cover a little water. What's good is I can check on my fish now. Like the other night, I wouldn't dare open a live well, afraid one of them would jump out. Before I put that mesh over it. When I caught one, I had to just try to crack it and slip them in there. I'm gonna check, it, check on them in just a second. Alright, let's see what, that, see what that little fish looks like. Doing good. Doing good. Get him some company. I like his grass. It's kind of a smaller target. Right back there, it's basically just fields of it. I've caught a few out of it, but it's hard to fish it efficiently without wasting a lot of time. And these smaller patches seem to hold fish. You know, they're a lot easier to target. You can just fish the whole patch and cast or two. One bit it. Dang, one bit it a couple times. May have been a brand picking on it. Come back and get it. Missed him a little bit. Yep. Come and get it. Good deal. A bit big. That's a pretty good one. Pretty good keeper. Stay on. Oh, God. Come on. <clears throat> About a 14 inch. That's tough. All right. Like he was hooked pretty good. I thought I had him. All right. Can't lose not out here. I just got to catch a big one. Make up for it. He had me kind of pulled down in the grass for a second. Fat little joker. All right. That's good, though. Getting bites again. I should have came on up here. Oh. Frustrating. All right. It's weird. They're biting it. And then they don't get it, and they're all just about all of them coming back and getting it on the next cast. They usually, if they you know hit something, they won't they either go ahead and get it or they won't mess with it no more. And they're just kind of playing with it on that first cast and hammering it on the second. Dang, I can't believe I lost it. It's all right, just don't lose a bacon. I 
need to get me one of that gum nets, jack attack nets. But I mean, I would have probably tried to boat flip him anyway. He looked like he was hooked good and it was small. You know, but if I lose a five pounder because I couldn't get it in the boat, I'll be upset. <clears throat> Let's just not let that happen. I probably snatched too hard and tore a hole in him, but I was. I mean, if it's a four or five pounder, it's going to be hard to get them out of there if you don't go ahead and put some pressure on them right away. <sighs> this is what it is. Sometimes they come out. I'm glad that lose none that night I won. I had to rethink my front camera here. What I need to do is get me a little mount for both sides. That way when I turn the boat, put that joker on the other side. I can have it on the opposite side of where I need the boat flipping probably. One hit me again. So weird. They, they hit it a couple times. Maybe I'll bite it too. They hit it a couple times and don't get it. And you throw it back in there and they smoke it. Maybe. Missed a little bit. It's weird. Alright, come on, baby. I'd be feeling pretty good if I caught that other one. I'd have two right quick. That other one had been a quarter inch longer. And I'd have caught a seven pounder, and I'd have done this, that, and the other. I mean, yeah, I'd feel good if all that worked out. But... People take me out, catch a stripe on a light at night on Martin, and be like, man, if that stripe had been a bass, I'd, I'd have done good. <laughs> Talk about Yeah. If rainbows were made of pixie dust, I mean, are they made of pixie dust? Is that a relevant question? About as relevant as man, if that stripe had been a bass, mm. and about as relevant as man, if that one hadn't come off and that one hadn't been too quarter inch too short, it's all irrelevant. The only thing that counts is what's in the live well at the end of the night. That's a good one. stay on, stay on, stay on. Yes, good deal. Another keeper, baby. Another keeper. Good deal. Good deal. Get you in the live well. If I want to drop you in with a cold ball on you, you have to swim around till you die with a cold ball in your mouth. All right. Now let's be able to calmly open the live well. No any real concerns. Sweet. All right, that's two. Come on, baby. I keep thinking every one of them will be a four pounder. He just did get the hook in the bottom of his lip. Alright, that's two. Mark my bulls, eh? My angler app. Got two on that first one I caught. That non keeper and that one I lost. I get such a tizzy out here. Because everything's so new and. So much to remember to bring and everything. I forget to use my angler app a lot, but you got to get better with it. Cause I'll be glad I got that data one day. It's just so easy now. I just got to remember to do it. I need to put my little button down here or something where I'll see it. I don't think about it on my hat a lot of times. You can pair multiple ones, so that's what I need to do for my next trip. But it keeps up with what time you caught the fish, the GPS location on the map. And uh, kind of what the weather was doing. You can do all kinds of stuff. You can check wind data. And it's a good way to plan a trip. I'm going to do an article pretty soon about planning a trip with Angler app. Where you can go in there and kind of look at aerials and some topo and wind forecasts and weather forecasts and all within the app. It's a pretty neat deal. It was essentially a digital log where you. Uh, all the stuff that we want to write down but we never take the time to do so unless we just have a fantastic day this keeps up with it as you go and a lot of times you'll learn more from those bad days than you will from the good days so you just hook it up with bluetooth to your phone before your trip start your trip it's rolling the whole time everything's private you know people worry about stuff like that nowadays but Everything in it's private unless you decide to share it with somebody. But uh, 
pretty neat deal. Check them out, Angler. Angler app without an E. Oh! Stay on, baby. Stay on. That's another keeper. Stay on. Stay on. Stay on. Stay on. Good deal. Whew. Another keeper. Good deal. All right, see, now I remember, I talk about it a little while, I remember pushing it. All right, get him in the live well. Three in the tank, baby. Had a fourth one on. It was pretty, the fourth one, I think, was a little bit better than anything I got. Not much. I mean, a pound and a half. I don't even know if it was a pound and three quarter, but three already ain't bad. Got about 30 minutes of daylight left, probably. I'd like to get another limit before dark. Man, I'd like to catch a big one. It's going to be fun if I do hook into a big one with this thing in this kayak. All this grass, they'll have a pretty good chance of burying me up. I got it on a seven foot heavy with 40 pound braid. And a super duty lose reel, so I should be able to get them on out of there. But if a big one gets it, <coughs> should be, goes out the window. Got to pick up the pace a little bit on the paddling when I do paddle. What's the best way y'all found to paddle, you know, to move the boat the fastest? I was watching the video the other day and they were talking about making these long pulls, you know, it ain't really about how hard you paddle, just how far you can pull the paddle. So I don't know anything about what I'm doing. So let me know in the comments, please, if you got a good way to paddle fast, you know, move the boat fast paddling. What the best way to do it is I'm trying to learn and get better. You got to be so efficient to have a chance in one of these things out of this kayak. Because everybody else, I mean, they're running around in boats and got trolling motors when they're stopped. And, comes out here with a paddle, so when I do need to skip a little bit of open water, I need to know I'm doing it the best way I can, most efficient. If I can get in 20 more casts in a day, it matters, you know. Well, I was doing good, I'm glad to see that. I had actually uh, talked to a buddy of mine, or to Scott Butcher, he and I were talking about it. And, uh, wanted to use the name Yak Whale for these live whales in case I wanted to make some sale. So I got the trademark, or applied for the trademark on the name. Did a Google search, wasn't nothing out there, you know, with that name. Did a Google search and uh, got my lawyer to look at the trade, trademark office. So like two days later, we filed the paperwork. And then lo and behold, Yak Gadget. Uh, somebody sent me a link to Yak Gadget. It come out with a net kind of deal that hangs over the side, or it's like a net holder, I guess little metal frame that hangs over the side of the boat and uh, you put your net in there when you got a fish in it and just let your net fall through with the fish in the net I guess to get your camera ready or something like that and they called it yak well and it came out like between the time I did the Google search it was like on the 5th of August something like that and then the 7th of August we filed the paperwork and they released the yak well like on the 6th so I don't really know if it's I, you know, I don't know if they applied for a trademark. It takes like six months to find all that stuff out, so I don't know. But anyway, help me come up with another name other than Yakwell, because I gotta probably name it something else. But might try to make a few of these and sell them, was the idea. But uh, I'm gonna do a DIY article for Angler where you can see how I built it, what all I did, and it's honestly just, by the time you pay for shipping and pay me, Forty or fifty dollars, put one together. You know, whatever I would charge like that. But you can really just make one yourself if you're interested in keeping a fish alive on kayak and for you know for an extended period of time. Anyway, I have that DIY article up for too long. When I do, I'll put the link below this video. I try to remember to come back, put the link in. But uh, yeah, a little live well for the kayaks, doing good. I turn my light on. Be a good one. Good deal. Keeper. Stay on, stay on, stay on. All right. That's another keeper, baby. About swallowed it. All right. I just need a big one. I'm 99% sure he's a keeper. I know he is. I'm a loser. I'm going to measure him. 
Oh yeah, 13. Good deal. Good deal. Need one big one. I'll be sitting in hog heaven. That right there looked like it was gonna be a good one for a second because it uh had a pretty good weight coming out of there. Let's see if everybody's doing all right in here. Everybody's doing good. Just need a little company. There you go. So much better than before. All right. Good deal. One more. Come on. Be a big one. Be a big one. Need a big one. Come on. I thought that was going to be big. I thought every one of them was going to be a big one. They are all big ones in the dang kayak. Yellow. Hello. Doing good. I got four little keepers, lost a keeper. So you got you got one keeper? I ain't got one little keeper. They uh I caught a uh Hold on, that's a big one. That's a big one. That's a big one. Stay on, stay on baby. Stay on. Uh shoot, 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 shoot. Oh, come on baby. Stay on baby. Yeah. All right, it's about a two pounder. Had me buried up in some grass. Uh, I caught everything I caught on a swim jig. Uh, had had one keeper come off and caught a non keeper, so I've had seven bites. But uh, hang on, I'm, I'm gonna put them in a live well. Boy, it don't matter how big it is, if you try to boat flip it into this boat, into your chest, I mean, you ain't got nowhere to put it, but just to try to boat flip it into your crotch and try to squeeze your legs on them. That's all you can do. Anyway, all right, well, hello, be careful. Good luck. I had something going to hit it as soon as it hit the water. I was getting a little score tracker update from Pops. He got one little keeper, or two little keepers, and lost another keeper, he said. But uh, that something going as soon as it hit the water. He smoked it. You'd think it'd be too dark to even throw this thing. I, I want to pick up a spinnerbait or a buzzbait or something, but as long as they're eating it. It gives me about what I had last time, about seven pounds. Maybe that'll be enough. Maybe I'll catch something in a minute. Big enough. Alright, so I'm gonna get out of here without getting a snake bit. It's late in the game. Mm. What's cool about this deal is I can just peel up and put it in my truck. What'd you have, Pop? Five cents. What about you, Gina? Huh? What y'all got? Like 12. More. Yeah, they're doing good. Some little bubble makers on there. See y'all later.